It's Valley's most detailed, geeky, in-depth weather forecast video. It's weather for weather geeks here on the 12th day of May 2022. Yet another beautiful day with warm temperatures today. It's getting kind of boring, right? I don't think we mind too much. It's always a long winter around here. These are the kinds of days that we dream about in January. Today, just a little bit different, and I mean just a little bit, in that there was a little bit of a haze in the sky today. And actually, this was some high-altitude wildfire smoke that was overhead for a good chunk of the daylight hours today, making it just seem a little bit hazy, making the, the sunshine a little more muted than the bright blue skies we've had over the last uh, few days. So we had that overhead today, and uh, some of this is, is lingering this evening. We make for a really nice sunset across the valley this evening. Temperatures at this hour very similar to the same time last evening. We reached the lower 80s for daytime highs yesterday. We dropped into the 40s in most spots last night, right back to the lower 80s this evening. Tonight will be the mildest night of the week so far, with some places not dropping much below about 56 or 57. So a warm start to the day coming up for our Friday. How warm is it locally? We are in the 7 o'clock hour, still warmer at 79 at the airport, warmer than Miami. And earlier we had very similar numbers to Phoenix. We're actually about the same as Albuquerque. We're warmer than Los Angeles. Uh, all the cool weather is centered out here in the West. Cool weather compared to the average. The middle of the country is just baking. 92 in Minneapolis, 96 in Omaha, 91 in Dallas. There's a lot of humidity out here as well. And we also have another severe weather risk this evening with severe thunderstorm watches and tornado watches stretching from North Dakota and Minnesota on south into the Kansas area. Separate severe thunderstorm watch across parts of the UP of Michigan and northeastern Wisconsin. The weather is relatively quiet here locally. We actually have uh, an upper level low that's been hanging out off the coast for a lot of this week. It's finally washing ashore. This is what has been bringing blustery and showery weather to the beaches of the Carolinas. It hasn't been a very good week to be at Myrtle Beach or the Outer Banks or places like that. This is coming ashore and this is actually what's going to start to influence our weather over the weekend with a, uh, a chance for some wet weather here by Saturday and Sunday. But one more dry day, our sixth in a row coming up on Friday. Our model here has a couple of green blotches on it Friday afternoon. I'm not buying this. I think we'll be dry from start to finish on our Friday. But as we head into the weekend, as I've been saying all week, neither day is a washout. But starting in the afternoon Saturday, a hit or miss shower or storm will be a possibility. A lot of us will get away with a dry day on Saturday. Some of us will deal with a, uh, a shower or a thunderstorm. Then these will settle down later at night, and uh, while there could be a shower early in the day Sunday, the, the wet weather is a little more likely as we get into the afternoon, and this cold front starts to make its approach. Showers and storms should uh, perhaps be a little more numerous Sunday afternoon, but even Sunday, not everyone's going to get wet. Some of us will, and some of us will not. You can check out hourly rain chances anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Those go out 48 hours into the future. As far as the weekend goes, Saturday into Sunday, Rain chances Saturday only peak at about 30% in any one location for a few hours in the afternoon. Notice the modestly higher rain chances midday and afternoon on Sunday, but it's not like we have a 100% chance in this forecast. A lot of us will just get away with dry weather this weekend. Some of us will see a pretty good drink of water. It's going to be one of those hit or miss, just kind of randomly place things. Impossible to say. Who's going to get wet and who's not? If you have outdoor plans this weekend, I would keep those plans right now, but have a backup just in case. Some of this activity meanders over your location. Temperature-wise, still pretty warm this weekend. We'll do 80 on Saturday and 78 on Sunday. All right, we've been talking all week about the total lunar eclipse Sunday evening. Today's modeling is a little more optimistic as far as the cloud cover goes by later Sunday evening. So we get those hit or miss showers and storms in the afternoon, and then things settle down pretty quickly in the evening. And today's models would suggest it clouds back up overnight and into Monday morning for a time. But uh, let me actually back this up to right around eclipse time. Right here, right around midnight. You can see that this particular model uh, does have you know, some patches of at least partly cloudy skies, if not mostly clear skies. So this is just one model. It's just one run of one model. But it shows kind of what a lot of models are, are depicting today in that uh, we may see enough of a break in the clouds in the evening before they thicken back up overnight that uh, we have a decent chance, maybe, of seeing this uh, total lunar eclipse. So just a reminder of the uh, timeline here. The partial eclipse starts at 1027. The real show, when the when the moon is completely red, 
and covered by the Earth's shadow will be from about 1129 through about 1 a.m. 12.53 a.m. is when the total eclipse ends. The partial eclipse ends at 1.55. Right now, I would say our chances of being able to view this are about 40%. This number may go up or down over the next couple of days, depending on uh, what the model trends are. I mentioned today's trends a little more optimistic. If you asked me to pick a number yesterday, I'd say it's about 20% chance that uh, we could uh, view this without too many clouds Sunday evening. I've you know, kind of uh, upped that uh, chance today to 40%. Maybe that number will keep climbing as we get new information over the next couple of days. There is going to be a modest cool down during the middle of next week. You can go ahead and plant at this point. I don't think we're going to see a frost and freeze again this season. Some of the coolest temperatures I could see us having over the next couple of weeks, probably upper 30s at the coolest, and that's just in the coolest spots. I don't see any sort of a freeze or even temperatures flirting with freezing very likely in the next couple of weeks. And by that point, we're into the end of May, and uh, historically speaking, it's almost unheard of to see a freezing temperature once we get into very late May and into June. It's only happened once or twice. Very, very small odds. 8 to 14 day outlook shows the warmth building back in after that modest cool down. Middle of next week, I think the following weekend, so not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, right around the 21st, 22nd, it looks pretty warm, probably uh, similar temperatures to the regime we've had this week. In other words, some highs in the lower 80s. That'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Coming up on Friday, we'll take another long look at the weekend forecast, the eclipse forecast. We'll take a look at some of the models for very late May and into June and see if the warmth that will kick in in the medium range will have some staying power, compared to the average, of course, into uh, into the month of June. So you're going to for look forward to that on Friday's Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, have a great night, everyone. I'll see you back here on Friday.